Thank you very much, everyone who is joining today. A sure color V7000, Epson's first entry into the UV flatbed market. Very excited to be talking about this today. For those of you who were on ISA yesterday, you kind of got a glimpse and a, a fast little overview of what the sure color V7000 is. Uh, today, we're going to go a little bit more in depth and kind of show exactly what's going on uh, behind the technology. So we're, again, very excited. Uh, what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be going over some slides, kind of going over an overview of what the SureColor V7000 is about. And then uh, after that, we'll go over a live demo. We'll watch it print, go over some of the usability features, and then uh, end it with that. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our presentation. And I'm David Lopez again, uh, signage product manager here at Epson America. Thanks. So the SureColor V7000 4x8 UV flatbed. This is an entry level four by eight UV flatbed. This is gonna have 10 colors. This is what's gonna make us a little bit different out there than the competition. Uh, we're gonna have black, cyan, magenta, yellow, gray, light cyan, light magenta, red, varnish, and white. For those of you who've been in the industry for a while, you know how important it is to ha actually have some of these extra colors. It's gonna help with the color gamut, it's gonna help with the precision of the dots and just overall get a nice, clean, smooth image. And if you are familiar with Epson products, you know we have a high standard when it comes to quality and we haven't fallen short here with the UV flatbed and excited that we're able to come out with an entry level UV flatbed with 10 colors. This will be bundled in with our Epson Edge Print RIP software. This is our proprietary uh, RIP software. It's a out of the box solution. It is an entry level RIP software. But for those of you concerned, we are partnered up with different RIP manufacturers. I know Onyx already has a driver for this. Please contact your whatever uh, RIP manufacturer you're working with now and ask them if they have a driver for the V7000. Uh, and I'm sure they're either working on it or already have one live. Nice thing is this prints up to three inches thick. And this is actually kind of a marking friendly number. We like to say three inches because it's nice and uh, uh, a nice even number, but it's actually 3.14. We know people are going to push it to the limits, and you'll notice that it actually goes a little bit above three inches, which is 3.14 inches. Now, this is huge because it's opening up the market. I'll talk a little bit more why this is important. Next thing on here is the variable droplet. Again, this is our Epson printhead technology. We don't use any other printhead technology besides our own. We know we manufacture the printheads. We manufacture the ink. We do everything to make sure that we get the best quality, best reliability that you can with a UV flatbed printer. And let's just jump right into the, what I call the brain or, or the, the heart of the actual printer. It's the print heads. Now this is gonna have eight micro prees of print heads. This is huge. This is how we're gonna be able to get fast speeds even though we have the huge color set. Remember there's 10 colors in here. Now the last thing we wanted to do is have all 10 colors but have a reduced speed. So with how we have staggered the print heads, what print heads we've actually used on this, we were able to actually maintain the speeds and quality. Now, everybody knows in this industry, as technology increases, we want a faster printer and we want better quality. So I think we made a huge advancement and having these print heads, the amount of print heads and how we've actually staggered them. We're gonna have a variable droplet size as low as 3.5 picoliters. Again, Epson quality. We're all about Epson quality here. And we have not fallen short here with a SureColor V7000. It's gonna allow for that accurate placement. So what does this mean? Not only does it mean you're gonna get better quality images, but it's actually gonna help with the amount of ink you're actually putting down. Because we're able to put perfectly placed dots exactly where we want them, you don't have to overcompensate or look for dot gain in order to get the nice, coverage that you're looking for. We're able to perfectly place those uh, as expected. So I like to say that we're raising the bar on the quality. We're raising the bar in the entry level UV flatbed market. And this is how we're doing it. So if you look out there, you look at competitive machines, really you're not gonna get a 10 color system for under 200,000. You look at those bigger, you know, those big high, high industrial printers that do have some spot colors, but you're paying, you know, a quarter million dollars or higher. You're able to get all these colors in an entry level for under 100,000, even with red, with gray, the white and varnish inks. The white, 
one of the important parts of this, we have a nice opaque white, even at production speeds. So you possibly don't even have to do multiple layers of that white. The density of the white alone uh, does a great job. And like I said before, Epson quality, we always want to make sure that we're getting that Epson quality and delivering this quality to all of our customers, whether it's our UV series, it's our resin printers, our signage printers, or any of our printers, we like to set the standard for the Epson quality. And it kind of, kind of, it kind of just jumps into that next bullet here. So we're changing the image quality expectations. Now, the, this technology has been out for some time now. And I say this with a lot of our different printers because this is in our mind when we're actually designing printers. How can we solve problems out in the market? How can we change the expectations? When the technology first came out, people were just excited to get a, you know, a UV flatbed printer under 100,000 that can print directly to your boards, that you can print directly to wood, to metal, to glass. But now, why don't we do that and up the quality? And that's what we've done here with the SureColor V7000. Here, we're talking a little bit about the print head arrangement and how we've actually achieved these fast speeds and having all the 10 color system. So you can see the backside of the carriage, you're gonna have your two dedicated white print heads. In the middle, we're gonna have our color. So you're gonna see CMYK on the left side. And then on the right side, you're gonna see that gray, red, light magenta and light cyan. And in the front, we're gonna have two dedicated heads to varnish. This is what's gonna help and change the whole game of the UV flatbed market. Now, we're thinking about high productivity. Even though this is entry level, we still know that everybody wants high productivity. And when we're designing this, we're thinking about this, how can this best be used in the market? That's why we did it. And this is just some of the things that we're thinking about when we're designing these printers. Here, you're gonna to start to see actual numbers. So what I really want you to focus on is the three layer printing. Now, the top dark blue bar, that's just color printing. You're gonna notice that, let's say production speed, 164 square feet an hour. Now, when you're actually printing three layers, that means three layers on the same pass, white, color, varnish. You're gonna notice that the speed kind of just doesn't really go down as much as you would expect. And it's because of that print head layout. Now, with competitive machines out there, if you introduce a white, or a clear or varnish or, or whatever uh, ink set that they have, you're gonna notice that the actual speed reduces by 50%. That's a huge thing. So the last thing you're gonna wanna do is actually add those extra special colors in your printer because you don't want it to stop. So we said, we wanna give everybody the option to have that white, have that varnish and the colors and not have to sacrifice the speed that you would be expecting from a UV, UV flatbed printer. And we've done a great job at doing this here. So if you think about production speeds and we're, you wanna know about maybe boards, a four by eight board, you're looking at about nine boards per hour. We've done some nice upgrades to this actual printer. So I've actually seen, this printer has been in the works for the past 10 plus years. It's been talked about here at Epson and we're trying to figure out how can we make this best? How can we solve those pain points? What are we gonna do? We have some iterations of software that came out. This, the latest upgrade we have is actual fine production modes. So this is something uh, newer that we just came out with into our system here. Now, the fine print speeds are, you wanna get that three point text absolutely perfect. It is gonna slow down the speed a little bit, but you're gonna be able to achieve those fine uh, production, fine standard, fine quality modes. So again, it will reduce the speeds, but you're gonna get those that quality that you're expecting. Now. I've done a lot of testing. I've been doing, I went to actually to Japan to go see this uh, last year, over a year, year and a half ago now. And you're still getting great quality off of the regular print speeds. We just wanted to give this an option for someone who's really dialed into that fine text, fine line that you're gonna be able to do this. And we've been able to provide that. Let's talk a little bit about the UV ink. So, for those of you who are familiar with our signage line, you're gonna say, hey, this is your first introduction to UV ink. And that's actually not the case. Our SurePress uh, label printers have actually been using this ink for quite some time already. So it's nothing new, we've been producing it. We just wanted to bring it over to our signage side and introduce the UV flatbed. So with that being said, we have one liter ink bottles. 
It's for our 10 color system. The, the thing that's really gonna separate us, I'm gonna say it a couple times, is the red and the gray inks. Having that white and varnish in there as well. White and varnish is a little bit more common, but red and gray, that's what's really gonna separate us. You wanna get those nice red colors that are really hard to hit. And we're gonna have a low ink cost per milliliter. So you're looking about 15 cents per milliliter. Now, for those of you who are asking, is white a different price? Is varnish a different price? And the answer to that is no. All the colors are the exact same price. So 15 cents per milliliter. So about $150 a bottle of ink all across the line. Doesn't matter if it's white or black. Another thing is we're always thinking about certifications. We're thinking about safety. We wanna make sure that we're bringing out inks that are you know, environmentally friendly. So we have Green Guard certif uh, certifications worldwide. We have, uh, you know, AGBBB, or I'm sorry, AGBB for Europe, and we have the French VOC. And this is just to show you that we've done our homework. We've been producing this ink. We have it worldwide. We've met all the standards, and it's great ink. Let's talk a little bit about the ink characteristics. So we've gone, we, when we're designing this printer, we're trying to think what would be the best ink characteristics we can have and we chose a down the line semi-flexible ink. So you can see for color in white, it's about 265% flexibility. For varnish, it's about 165%. And that's pretty normal when it comes to this type of ink. And you can see the tensile strength of the ink and stretchability. So this is uh, until it starts to crack. So we've done a lot of the testing. We have scratch and rub, uh, rub resistant testing that we've been doing as well. So the pencil test, the rub test, and it's passed a lot of the, uh, the test and we get increased results when we do the varnish coating on top. One of the things I like to add is that before people would just say, no, nah, I'm just gonna use varnish or clear as a spot UV because it's just gonna take too long to print. Now remember, the speed isn't reducing as much. So now you can actually do flood coats, get a nice almost glass looking feel on top of your image uh, that can help with some protection and also give a nice effect. The adhesion test we've done, so we received an A or a B grade on the ISO 2409 test. So the cross cut test that we've done where they do a basic cross cut, they get the tape, they pull it out and they see uh, if anything's come up. So we've gotten really good grades on that and uh, it's performing very well for us. I do see some questions coming in. Uh, I'll try to get to them towards the end of the presentation. White, uh, white uh, ink recirculation. So this is something that is necessary when you have white. And this doesn't matter if you're in UV or solvent side, DTG, the ink just naturally tends to separate a little bit. So what we've done is we have a really good white recirculation system. It prevents any kind of sedimentation from going to the lines. So what's happening is that every 30 minutes, it's actually gonna circulate through the whole system, not outside of the printhead, so you're not losing that ink, but it's inside of the system from the sub tanks down to the ink delivery system. Uh, it's rotating and making sure that it's constantly circulating. For those of uh, the, some of our dealers that actually have this machine, one of the great uh, comments that we get is saying, hey, we never get nozzle dropout on the white inks. It just, you know, it's really, does really well. We get nice uh, nozzle reliability with this. And it's really because of this white recirculation constantly moving and making sure that the ink is always fresh. Usability features. This is something that you all expect. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of, of what we've done to kind of separate ourselves and think about the expanding market that, we, that we're jumping into. So of course, pin registration system. This is great for those four by eight boards. You could, you know, easy workflow, bring that in there, align it, get ready to print. And it's very easy to do. You get a, a flathead screwdriver. You're able to rem, uh, counterclockwise that pin. It comes up to the desired, uh, thickness and then you slide your board in very easy what's nice is, is multi-zone vacuum now competitive systems i've seen out there actually have only two zones which really don't make sense well they make sense for maybe just boards but you got to remember time has gone by different markets are opening up it's not only boards that you're printing on of course boards is a huge part of the market printing on poroplast or or i'm sorry corrugated plastic and wood or, or you know, whatever you want to print on. But now, since you're, then people are starting to figure out, I can print to plastics, I can print to 
anything. So this now goes to jars, to different things. So a nice thing is having these multi-zone vacuums where you can turn off, let's say zone two, three, and four, and dedicate the vacuum zone to that one. Now this is important because now you don't have to really tape off different areas. You could just allow the maximum suction of the vacuum going to that one zone. Very, very useful. Another thing it's also useful for is workflow. If you start printing on zone one and you're starting to get zone four prepared, now you can you know, constantly go print zone one, print zone four, and do rinse and repeat to get that workflow going. So it's a nice little feature that we have. Very easy to turn off and on. In the live presentation, I'll, I'll show you where the levers are really quick and easy. Next thing we have is our auto thickness sensor. Now the auto thickness sensor is a nice feature where you give it some coordinates and you go exactly where you wanna read the thickness. It'll automatically read the thickness. There's no adjusting you have to do, no addition. It automatically knows that it's gonna go 1.3 millimeters above the surface and start printing. There's also another way you can do this. If you have maybe digital calipers or another way to measure the thickness of your material, you can manually input that as well, but we've given the option to actually do uh, the auto thickness sensor. And again, up to 3.14 inches thick. So let's talk a little bit about the multi-zone vacuum. It is a four zone vacuum system. And then on the bottom left, you see a nice little image of where the levers are at, uh, where it's clear, clearly labeled. You bring down or up, whether you want it open or closed, and you're able to uh, do that pretty quickly. Now in the front, we have a nice little uh, button. So it lights up in green. I'll show you in the live presentation. You press the button and it turns on the vacuum. Very simple. So here, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, about the thickness sensor, we know that time is of the essence. So we've actually have three different modes that you can do with a thickness check. Now there's no reason to get the head carriage all the way up to that maximum head height to go over and measure something that's probably thin. So we have three different settings where you can actually say, hey, don't go all the way up, maybe go up only 20 millimeters. Cause I know that my, my material is only about seven. So there's no reason to go all the way up or maybe something's a little bit thicker. Let's go up 50 or to the max. So it has different options there just to speed up the process. So you don't have to go all the way up. Again, productivity is something that we're always thinking about and we're thinking about our, our end users on how we can speed up the process. Our jam detection, uh, detection sensors. So we have a really cool jam detection sensor. And what we learned from out in the field is we've all been there. I've, I've been in this industry for some time now. I've printed a lot on UV flatbeds and some of them do have these jam sensors. But the problem is, is you have an expensive piece of acrylic. You're about 90% done. A piece of tape or something comes up, hits that jam sensor, and now your whole job is ruined. You have to start over. Waste of material, waste of time, waste of ink, electricity, you name it. So a nice thing that we've done is that if the jam sensor hits, of course we wanted to protect the print heads at all costs. But if you notice that maybe it was a fluke, maybe a little piece of tape hit it, nothing shifted, you can actually go to the software, hit resume printing or lift the carriage all the way up, double check, make sure nothing's actually moved or hit or there's no problems and resume printing. This is huge for the market. This is the number one complaint we heard about and competitive printers was, man, if the jam sensor hits accidentally, I just lost you know, a $50 piece of acrylic. And you know, that, that costs over time. So having this feature and being able to continue printing is huge and there's no steps or anything like that. You can't see any banding or anything like that. It perfectly takes off uh, right where it, was, where it left off and you have a great print still. We also have a proximity sensor. So this is very important. Uh, everybody has this tendency when you're printing to stick your head on inside and look at the image. You wanna see the quality right away. Well. That's great and dandy, but you don't wanna get hit by the, by the carriage coming at you. I've seen it done before, it's not a pretty sight. So you wanna make sure that uh, you have some kind of protection against this and the proximity sensor uh, is there. It's actually an invisible laser that goes across from one part of the gantry to the other part of the gantry and it helps to prevent any kind of uh, serious harm. Now, again, just like the other feature, 
we know accidents happen. You, your arm flies up and it, hit, it breaks the sensor. The print stops. Again, don't have to worry about losing your job. You just hit resume because you know it was an accident and you keep going and you didn't lose your material. You didn't lose your time. You didn't lose your print. When it comes to printing, especially on acrylics, on different uh, corrugated plastics, naturally, it just has a lot of static electricity. A couple things we can do in the industry, typical is you get some isopropyl, uh, isopropyl alcohol, spray it down, that helps with the static electricity. But we also have built-in ionizers. Now, the built-in ionizers, what it's going to do is while it's printing, it's going to help reduce some of that static electricity. So a nice thing is that this is already embedded into the printer. This is not an option. This is not something that you have to ask your dealer for or anything like that. It's already in the printer. It's part of the system and it's embedded into the price of the printer. And having all these features, it's still at a very competitive price under $100,000. Here we're talking a little bit about Epson Edge, which is the rip software that comes with it. Even though it's an out of the box solution, it's still a powerful rip software. It's still gonna have your you know, tiling, spot color matching, color custom library support, Adobe PostScript 3 uh, reading. So it's still powerful enough to get your jobs out and do what you have to do. Now, again, we understand that if you're probably getting into this printer, you probably have, it's not probably your first printer. You probably have a solvent printer, maybe even a, a resin printer or you know, just a different type of a technology. So we know that you might already have a RIP software solution or workflow. So please contact your RIP manufacturer vendors and see if they have a driver for the V7000 so you can actually uh, use that and integrate your whole workflow. Another thing I'm gonna talk about and kind of harp on even on the next slide is Epson Cloud Solution Port. This is a very awesome tool. This has a lot of things where you can actually do remote monitoring. There's an uh, iOS and Android app if you're a production uh, manager, if you're the owner, you can see how much the printer has been printing. Uh, in the future, near future, very near future, you're gonna, see, you're gonna see how much ink each job uh, actually used, costing, uh, firmware updates, service alerts, and here's the real kicker when it comes to this. The Epson Cloud Solution port, uh, when you register for it, just being registered on it, you will get a discount on the printhead price. So if you're, let's say, out of warranty and um, you want to purchase a printhead, just because you're registered to the Epson Cloud Solution Port software, uh, you do get a massive discount on the printhead price. Now, you're going to see kind of the, some of the screens from the Epson Cloud Solution Port. It's awesome. You can have a lot of different printers. This is only going to support Epson printers. So if you have uh, an R series, an S series, uh, you can actually have all of them here. You can see your whole workflow. You can see uh, what's going on, how many prints, if there was errors, how much time are you spending on errors? How much time is it just sitting in the ready status? And then you can see uh, total print area, how many jobs printed, the operating rate for all of your printers. And then we have another reporting uh, side of it where it kind of gets in depth. So it's very nice. It does work with third-party software. So even though you're using Onyx, and you still have this connected to our cloud server, uh, you're still gonna be able to uh, see all of your operating results. Epson Preferred Plus. So we do have a one-year extended service plan. And the nice thing is this covers all eight print heads and it will also include a 12-month maintenance. So uh, an Epson, and this is supported by Epson. Uh, our, we have an advanced product support team that will be uh, focusing on this and they'll come in on the 12 month maintenance, make sure everything is good. Maybe put some grease all, along the carriage, make sure everything is, is uh, running as best as possible. These warranties are stackable up to five years total. So please talk to your local Surecolor V7000 reseller to get more information on pricing on uh, the extended warranties. So here's some specifications. So you can see, again, this is being recorded. So you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to see this again. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the live presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, I'm gonna turn on the vacuum. I'm gonna show you really quick, uh, now that you can see me here, I'm gonna show you really quick how easy it is to get a print going. 
So my first button here is the vacuum button. I wanna make sure the vacuum is uh, done. What we've done ahead of time is I've done the actual thickness check. So we have a piece of corrugated plastic here. Now I know that I'm only gonna use one zone. So what I wanna do really quick is I wanna go check and make sure that my only, my front zone, front left, which is my zero, zero position is turned on. So uh, go ahead and follow me and go to the, the vacuums. So as you can see here, it's clearly labeled. This is the front, this is the back, back, back. You can see that. And uh, I have everything closed except for my front zone one. So I'm good to go on here. And you know what, while we're back here, let me just go ahead and, and show you where we actually put in the ink. So the inks do come in that one liter bottle, like I, like I explained, and you can see uh, one of the bottles here. Now in the back here, it's a very simple system where you actually just unscrew the top, pour in the ink, and you're good to go. There's not much to it. Now, when you're running low on ink, uh, you will see a light come up in the front. So let's go ahead and follow me to the front of the printer. You'll see a, a light come up right here in the front. It'll shine, it'll say light cyan or light magenta or red is running low. You put some new ink in there and then you're good to go. Very simple, very easy. Again, productivity is huge. We want you to keep printing, see little indicators where you can just continue printing. So first step, what I would do is actually check the thickness check. I wanna go in here to the system. Uh, we use everything is based off is uh, our UV controller system. It's a software. Now I like to explain this kind of like a control panel, if you will. This is gonna do your thickness check and this is gonna do a couple little integrated features that we have on here, but basically it's what's driving the actual printer. Now the RIP software, uh, we do recommend that it's on a separate PC. And just because we don't want to bog down the UV controller, we do know that files get really big, especially when, let's say you're doing a full four by eight image. Uh, those files can get really big. We don't want to bog down that PC. So we do recommend that you put it on a, um, a separate PC. Now, we do have some customers that have a super high-end PC with tons of memory and are okay with having both. Uh, we do recommend that if you are going to put the RIP software and the UV controller on one PC, you have an uh, incredible amount of RAM and uh, memory. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to go to the UV controller. I have my image already pre-ripped from uh, uh, Edge Print. Coming to my UV controller, it pops up here. And then on, let me see if I can get a zoom in a little bit onto the screen. Thank you, Jake. Oops. Perfect. So on this screen, a nice feature that we're doing is while it's printing, you're gonna see where it's at on the actual print. Now here on the right side, it's gonna tell me my X and Y margin. Along the actual front and uh, the X direction and Y direction of the printer, you're gonna see that there's an engraved uh, measuring tool, if you will and where you could just put in your X and Y coordinates. So I can come here, I, think I could see that, hey, it's about 10 millimeters off to the, on the X direction. I'm gonna put that 10 millimeters in the software and on the Y direction, maybe about five millimeters. We know it's gonna fit perfectly. So once I'm, from, once I'm done here, I'm gonna check my Y print direct, direction, which means do I want white color varnish to go on top or do I wanna switch it backwards where it's gonna be, or I'm sorry, forwards where it's going to be color and then white. Now, the reason why you would want color and white is if you want to do uh, printing on clear acrylic. I have an example here. Let me show you. So on the, on the clear acrylic, this is something where we actually printed color and then white. So you can see it's a big white board, but you look on the other side, you have an amazing quality image. Definitely opening up the market for different things. People think UV printers and just think maybe real estate signs or, or just boards, but really with a quality you can get, you're gonna be able to open up the market to a lot of different things. Even on the back here, this is actually printed on MDF uh, wood, all three panels here. And you're able to get really nice photographic images. You can actually put registration marks, connect that to a router, 
and do nice cutouts, signage, different kind of signage, and still get that nice quality that you're expecting. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the print. So keep in mind, we already did the, the thickness check. We've already uh, set the file already ready. So all I'm doing is hitting print. I turn on the vacuum, I'm hitting print. It's starting where I want it to start. Now you can kind of see on the screen here, you're gonna see a, a blue line. And this is what I was talking about. Um, it shows you the progress of where it's at going all the way up. So this particular print, we're actually printing uh, white color and varnish. I, I know the, the image is already white, but I just wanted to show you on uh, a quality mode, uh, the actual speed of having the three layers. Now, one of the little things I wanna show you and, and which, again, I'm very excited about is we know accidents happen. I'm here talking to you. I'm very animated, moving my hands and whoops, that happens. Now, when that happens, normally competitive printers, the job is done, you've wasted it. The nice thing is that we can do a couple different things here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my Z axis rise. So now it's picking up the carriage. Now I'm saying, hey, is something there? Did I hit something accidentally? What's going on? Oh, nope, it was me accidentally. I moved my arms. There's nothing wrong. You know what? Let's resume printing and let's get back to business. I'm gonna hit the resume print. It goes back down to the actual thickness and continues to print seamlessly. And at the end of this, I'll show you the board so you can see that there's no banding, there's no skipping that happens. It's all perfectly uh, as you would expect. Also, while that's printing, I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, what this is in the front here. In the front, we actually have, um, it shows you an indication of the actual temperature of the sub tanks. So how the system works is it goes it has an ink delivery system that goes brings up ink all the way to sub tanks on the top. Now the sub tanks are getting to an actual uh, temperature to make sure that the viscosity of the ink is perfect going all the way down. This is going to help us control that perfect dot and get that quality that you're expecting. Now, we do recommend, and let's talk a little bit about maintenance. We do recommend doing a daily maintenance. Now, one of my jobs here, which is very fun for me, is how can I try to, let's try to break it. Let's see what's the maximum. How can I push this to the max? And there's, there's, I've gone times with not doing any maintenance for months. And just to kind of get the uh, real understanding of where this is actually going to be at. And it does a really good job because of the ink chemistry that we've designed the print heads that are, are with it, it just, it holds up really well. So what I recommend, uh, or Epson recommends as well, is that you check your nozzles, you make sure that everything's there. If you have one or two stubborn nozzles, you can go ahead and do two things. You can either do a full on cleaning, which I'll explain in a little bit, or B, we have a flush button here, which basically goes over to the home position. It raises a tiny bit, pushes out a little bit of ink, and then you're back, to, you're back to normal. Usually that little push of ink will help open up and clear up that nozzle, if any are missing. This is about to finish right now. I wanna show you, and hopefully you can see it via the camera. Uh, we are definitely in a new world. We have to be doing this uh, virtually. Usually we'll be you know, in a live in, in environment, but uh, hopefully you can see the spot varnish that I've done on these on the lipstick, it's very nice. It gives a nice appeal and it makes it stand out quite a bit. So this is almost done. I'm looking at my screen. It shows that it's almost done here. 
And it's nice that it shows you that because you can be from far working on different printers. You look at the screen really quick and say, oh, you know what's almost done. I better come to start replacing the board or do the next job. So it's just about done finishing curing up the last of the image. And then it finishes. Now, just to give you an example on how strong the vacuum is, I'm, I'm really trying to push this out of the way. It's really, it's gonna take a lot to kind of get this out. So it's a powerful vacuum that does really well. And remember we turned off all the zones to get this down. I didn't, if you notice, I didn't tape anything. I didn't do anything. We just put the board down, turned off the vacuum zones and started printing. Now let's see if we can get this glare to show up. You could kind of see it there, but we've done a nice little spot varnish on the actual top of the lipstick. And you can see it's a very nice effect. So again, this is opening up the market to different types of industries. Not only are the boards, maybe you can do some prototyping with, uh, for boxes, for packaging. Maybe you can do, you know, there's just so many things you can actually do. We're printing here on acrylic and cutting it out on a, on a router. We're printing on wood. We're printing on cardboard. Let me get some examples here. This was print on straight wood. This is on a cardboard. Of course, this is a corrugated plastic. And then uh, some nice things here is we've done some cutouts with uh, the Epson logo with our router and printer. So it's really expanding the market on what you can actually do with this printer. And because of that 3.14 inch uh, head gap, you're really, it opens it up. We're very excited to be showing this today and going over this presentation. Now, last but not least, uh, I kind of just, last thing I want to show you is the quick maintenance and how it's done. You would go on the software. You actually, it takes about really seven minutes if that. And you go on the software, you go to the cleaning function there. And what happens is this system here, I'm going to give you a quick peek too underneath the hood. If we can get the camera a little bit zoomed in over here. Perfect. I'm going to give you a quick peek under the hood. And in here we have our sub tanks. And that's what's holding up the ink. Now, what's happening here is you're going to see some other indication here. This is a negative and positive pressure system. So the negative pressure is holding the ink up and positive pressure will push the ink out during the cleanings. Now on the left side and right side, well, first of all, you're going to notice that there's two different gauges and they're at two different negative pressure points. Now, the reason for that is because the white viscosity is a little bit different than the rest of the colors and varnish. So we have a little bit higher negative pressure for white. Now, when doing the actual cleaning, there's a button on the left and right. And let's see if we can get a, a zoom into that button, Jake. Is that right? Perfect, you can kind of see the button here. Uh, what you would do is you just press the button for three seconds, left side, right side. So it's color varnish, this is white. And then the carriage will rise up. This little box in here pushes out. You Wipe the printhead and you're good to go. Instantly, uh, you could check your nozzles. For the most part, we've had really good success without any kind of missing nozzles or anything like that. And we can go straight to printing. We've done a great job of making this as easy as possible for anybody to pick up and, and figure out. The learning curve is very minimal and uh, you're gonna be able to start printing to direct to substrates. So I know I get this a lot. Everybody makes fun of me because they say, man, you said excited like, 10 times during the presentation, I truly am excited for this product. I've been testing it, I've been running it, and it's something that I'm very proud to say that uh, I'm working on here with Epson and I'm very excited to have this out into the market. So with that being said, this is the end of the demonstration and the presentation. I hope you learned a lot about the Surecolor V7000. If you guys have any questions, please uh, look up the local resellers that sell the Surecolor V7000. And or you can go to epson.com slash UV flatbed.